So this is about fear. Fearing. I face the consequence. Fear and desire. That fear, F-E-A-R, false experiences appearing real. A phobic fear of rejection when all I crave is connection. This relationship that you have with fear. My fears and my flaws that usually interfere with my thoughts had stopped. Well, I guess it's, yeah, sort of. It's about fear, really. But that's what wolves represent, isn't it? Like, ooh, I'm scared. Big bad wolf, who's afraid? Every day my crew says nay. You could bring the hounds in, I'll mobilize the town and give them a pound in. Try to fuck with we, tell Zeke Midas he might get flayed. You could hear him howl just for a sec, for we wreck his snout. How you like it now? Lyrical lunatics up in the house. We came to get loud. Everybody, I need you to shout. Hey! Yo, I need you louder. Hey! Everybody, I need you howling. Hey! Like you got a pelt. Everybody, make your presence felt. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not I. I dare Fenrir to wander over here. Hi. <laughs> So I'm just back from Scotland, and I wrote a poem about my experience there. I think it shows the lengths I will go for poetry. Your laughter, it's the morning after. I say, I swear I'm off the shots. They were the strongest I've ever came across. I need Bangkok, because nothing beats the heat. It defeats the aches at the back of my chest. When I think it's death, they say never mix your drinks. But I'm in Glasgow. I discovered a place, an open-minded space. It's called the Arlington Baths. You'd never know it's a members-only nut zone. When I heard of it, I confess I had a longing to undress for my hungover Sunday swim. I even had a trim. I steadied my breath, felt the beating in my chest. My heart stopped whenever I felt watched. I was grateful for the steam room flushies. My salmon pink skin hid my blushies. So here's the down low. Don't go when it's heaving at six o'clock. Hold off until seven, unless you want a naked yoga lesson. Cat cows and downward dogs, my behind was saved from being displayed. It was a semicircle, single file around. If you stay after eight, the members demonstrate. Their spring as they sling themselves over the traveling rings. I've never seen such finesse in bare skin. If you don't know where to look, just carry a book. See, nudists aren't just weirdos without clothes. We are all book lovers, I've discovered. And I wonder, what's the story beyond their naked form? Under the masks and the layers that we wear. Once the barrier was gone, there was no separation between us. My fears and my flaws that usually interfere with my thoughts had stopped. Thank you. So this is about fear. 
And um, this has been coming to me a lot lately of this life that we live in fear, whatever that means. And it hit me really hard that fear, F-E-A-R, false experiences appearing real. But how real are they? So this is a poem about that. Fear. Fear. This fear that somehow always seems so near. A neighbor I never knew I had. Who comes around the corner leaving boxes. A gift they say it is. Take it and give it to everyone you see, is what they always say to me. Stop, stop, I never asked for this. This is not how I want to create my reality. And today morning, as I got ready to start my day, it made its way to my head, reminding me of all the yesterdays I tried so hard to forget. Stop, stop, I never asked for this. This is not the life I deserve to get. Until a voice came in my head that said, silly, you're not getting the message. It's not here to scare you, but rather to be felt. And just to remind you that it cannot be dealt with resistance, my child. That this too is a gift from your neighbor I have been sending your way. And maybe it's time for you to listen to what it has to say. Invite them over for dinner. Sit them down on your table. Make them some pancakes. Maybe pour down some maple. And look them in the eye. Come on, baby girl, don't be shy. It's time to listen to what this fear has to say. It's time to listen to this fear for what it has to say. Thank you. The night bus home to Hounslow. The door swings open with a hiss and she walks in, an oasis in a desert of drunk revelers, late night stragglers and clubbers staring blankly at their phones. The bus pulls away and I see us talking in my imagination, but my stomach clenches at the thought of us talking in my imagination. The voice of doubt whispers in my ear. What if she doesn't want to speak to you? What if she has a boyfriend too? David, you're just not cool. How many times have I hesitated and debated with hindsight telling me what I should have done? A phobic fear of rejection when all I crave is connection. Too scared to open my heart to any kind of vulnerability. Aloof reservedness is my social anxiety. No more regrets of what may be, this will be our romantic comedy. The story of how we met, set on a night bus home to Hounslow. I walk over slowly and sit beside her, my heart pounding intensely, immensely stressed by the magnitude of this situation. Excuse me, I saw you get on. You're cute and I wanted to say hello. I'm David, what's your name? Emily. Hi, Emily. Shit, this is the part I'm supposed to keep speaking. <laughs> now desperately seeking something to say, frantically flipping through the roller decks in my mind, trying to find the right chat up line. Hey, Emily, how was your evening? She's receiving this with total disinterest. I cringe inside of me, inside of me, I see me walking through school gates. The terror of my first teacher awaits, alcoholic, bitter and twisted. Miss Donovan, she insisted there was something wrong with me. I didn't understand her anger and pain. I just felt the constant abuse of insults and shame. I tried to run away, but was caught, punished, forced to stay called to the front of assembly for everybody to see. Miss Donovan stood with a giant Bible in front of me. Put your hand inside, slam. There's no hiding from the chiding and screaming. David, what is wrong with you? David, what is wrong with you? David, what is wrong with you? A speed 
bump, 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 brings me back to the moment and atonement for the sins of the past. I'm feeling the pull to escape the situation and attempt to resuscitate this conversation with witty anecdotes of karaoke, singing Bohemian Rhapsody. But there is no Rhapsody, just slow golf claps for me. What happened to our romantic comedy? This ain't the movie I paid to see. Sitting in silence most uncomfortably. The waiting excruciating. Driver, please hurry up the bus before I internally combust. Emily is fixed on her phone. I feel so alone on this night bus home and mercifully my stop arrives. Hey Emily, nice to meet you. Enjoy your evening. Stepping off with huge relief to release the grief of so many years holding back. I laugh, that was hard graph. I'm alive, I survive, she didn't evaporate. Mate, it was a car crash of a chat up for the whole bus to see, sat silently judging me. And yet I'm still here, it's okay to feel fear. It's going to be awkward to learn how to talk good. Going through the feeling is the only road towards healing and revealing, David, there is nothing wrong with you. As you walk into the dark night, your soul would be handcuffed. The divinely sanctioned darkness will ironically expose everything that you were blinded to. The light would have taken everything you own and everything you ever thought you were. Clear them all at the gates. Old photos and mementos of the wise, why, and the wounds, and the misery of being you. You would have no idea what would come of you. The pain will be deep, oppressive, insufferable, and seemingly indefinite. But here is where you join the chosen wanderers of the desert. Here is where you join those that are broken free from slavery, now enslaved by their own mutiny. Here is where you join those that are loved enough by God to be disciplined. And you have the right to remain silent here. As you walk into your own insane asylum, those mental patients, they are your mentors. Be inconspicuous for now. Any sudden movements, any tantrums will make this medication worse. They would swarm you and devour you. Be vigilant in your own mental self-control. Do not mistake their voices for the nurse's gentleness. Darling, beware. It is tempting to assume they care. But you see, you have asked for this. All you have to do is hold on and hold on hard to the part of you that is not corruptible. Hold on hard to the part of you that is not corruptible. And hold still. You see this relationship that you have with fear this intimacy cannot go on. You have asked for this so that you can know faith, faith that sometimes we are misled on purpose so that we can return more humbly, more wise and more whole to love 
And this is where humanity holds God. Thank you. It was cold. Snow white and flawless blanket the landscape, dwelt in darkness. I wake up in the wild, lost like a little child, surrounded by a fence no higher than chickens. Then there was, a, there, was no, there was not a sound, there was no one around. Within that little fence, this dream made sense. I lie on the snow beneath the silver moon. I long for the stars and beheld the winter tune. It was a peaceful dream, always from strag away from staggering life, but soon I'll have to wake, wake to daily strife. Then, something in the dark, a ferocious bark, and I was not alone. Eyes from the shadows had me surrounded, and out of the cold, wolves had me hounded. Burning bright eyes, snarling white fangs, paws hung over the fence, fighting for the meat. Their fangs snarling, their howls crying, their whimper calling, and I felt a longing. There was nowhere to go, the fence won't hold forever, and wolves will grow in hunger if they don't grow in anger. Do I wait in fear to be torn to shreds? Do I fight them all and die a hero's death? In each wolf's eyes, I saw deadly spirits, a calling to join the pack or devoured to bits. Feared and fascinated, I long to join these beasts. I cannot remain here, a chicken for their feast. Will they be my brothers to run wild and free? Will they tear me limb from limb, another killing spree? Smiling, I climbed over the fence, fearing, I faced the consequence. Thank you. All right. There's three monsters in that bedroom. But you only ever seen two. The one under the bed And the one in the attic behind the ceiling light. They both show different faces, but yo, they hide in kindred darkness. Fear and desire. They both draw strength from the tenured lack of light recessing and knowledge's recesses. And that mattress ain't shit but the carpet stitched of springs and cotton that fear then gotten swept under. And they'll never let you forget that it's down there. So you skip town there. You found air. You fly fast, forward, far. You dash toward the stars. Till your barge ends up stuck in a whole bunch of nothing. Desire's light had you fronting. It treated and tricked you to think you could keep fear away. So you steer away, flying blind with stars in your eyes to a darkness. You think you know until you hit the summit. And shit, you plummet. Cause that thing you covet didn't stop fear from coming in and rummaging in parts of you that you can't stomach. See, they convinced you that your pipes is weak, it's a leak, and they got just what you need to fix the plumbing. See, these brothers, they're mad cunning. They swing, flaming sword, back and forth for like forever and a fortnight. Like a snitchless game of Quidditch. So your brain is skittish, lenses litted, fitted like a new era. While this pair of bouncers, they pounce and they scramble up your ego infinito. They whip it to work. Wow. Who'd have thought it would work? How? They keep guarding that garden. The same one you were born and begotten. 
You must have forgotten. Trick. Fooled into walking. Ego. <sighs> Coughing, clamoring to and fro, zen, let that shit go. No one else uh, but self. Uh, dance between the darkness, perfectly timed to that rhythm, rattling threshold. The third monster waits behind. It's a uh, it's a locked door metronome. You done learn to hate. It never hibernates. You can feel its pace. The walls, they shake with every step it takes. And when it stops heaving, you can hear it breathing. A faint screaming sinks in. Your judgment's blinking, thinking what to do. Open, turn the knob. But then you start thinking of its repugnance and you quit your reach and you keep trudging. A bludgeon, scuffed soul, soul by that same sucker. Too disgusted to stop and wonder like, yo, what kind of spell am I under? Blundering, bending backward to keep fronting and acting like half of you ain't sure which side of the lock is a trap. It's three monsters in your bedroom. You only ever seen two, but ain't no mirrors in there, so what to do?